Welcome back. On this episode, we're going to finish up these maple wine racks and we're going to use a really useful technique of pattern routing to shape them up. All right, so my patterns are made. Both of those have been cut out and cleaned up on the spindle sander. The next step is actually going to be to transfer those patterns onto what's eventually going to become the jig that I use for the pattern routing. You could stop here and you could simply double stick tape this to the actual piece and route that way. Um, I prefer a reusable um, sled kind of a jig where I can, I can place the piece in it and with a couple toggle clamps, lock it down and then easily pop that out and go for the next one. So what I'm going to do, what I've got is a couple pieces of scrap plywood. Um, I've got one piece that's going to support the toggle clamps that I'm going to glue on top of the base piece. I'm going to start here by gluing these bottom pieces on and I'll just tack them on with a couple brad nails. Okay, so putting this piece on takes care of the reference surface for the bottom of the piece. But I also need to have a reference surface to lock this in place. So what I've done is I've got a couple of quarter inch pieces of plywood against scraps. These are one inch thick. So basically these are meant to mirror um, the size of the tenon. And as you can see, the piece will fit right over that quarter inch, but give it a, a reference surface on the side. What I'll probably do is put one under each tenon so it will firmly lock this in place. Now that I have my two jigs made, what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer these cuts onto the two jigs. So there is a trick to this. I don't just want to trace this jig or this template onto the jig. What I want to do is I want to um, trace half of it, then I'm actually going to flip the pattern over 180 degrees and trace the other side. What this does is it makes sure that the left side mirrors the right side, which will be important later on. All of my patterns are now rough cut and I have the original quarter inch plywood pattern uh, double stick taped onto the jigs. Um, in the, the router table itself, I have a, a pattern bit with the bearing on top that's going to ride against the plywood. And on each of these, I've got half of this pattern marked. What I'm going to do is go through on each of them and route out and pattern route the left side and I'll do all three of them that way then I'll take all the patterns off flip them over and route out the right sides that way any variation that was in that pattern will be lost when I flip it over anyway so I'm going to go ahead and do that
The last thing I need to do is to go ahead and put some of these toggle clamps on them. These will actually hold the pieces down as I do the routing rather than having to, to tape anything on there. It'll make it nice and quick to change pieces, flip them around, etc. The next step is to take all of my rails, lock them into the jig and how they're going to be routed, and go ahead and trace the back sides. After I trace them all, I will take them all over to the bandsaw and rough cut them out. I'm about to start doing the actual pattern routing. I've cut all of the curves very close to, but not at the line. So what I'm left with inside this pattern is just a very thin lip that I need to get rid of. In my router, I've got a uh, pattern bit that, that's very good for this. It's got both up and down cutters on it. And it's, it's also very robust. I believe this one's in a mana bit but it's worked very well for me in the past. And in fact, it's, uh, I've never really had an issue with it until just the other day, but we'll talk about that in a second. One thing I have to be cognizant of is the direction of the grain, which is running lengthwise across the pieces. No big deal when I'm routing downhill into these curves, but uphill can be a problem because you'll catch that grain and break it off. Before, when I was making these jigs, I made sure that they're symmetrical left to right. And the reason is I'm going to go through and I'm going to do just the left side of each of these cuts. Then I'm going to take the piece out. I'm going to flip it over and again, do the downhill side, which will be the uncut side now. And I'll be able to get all sides on the downhill. And I'll never have to go uphill with the bit. Well, that went smooth, right? Well, not exactly. Take a look at this. All right, so what you just saw, it was my first attempt at, at making these a couple days ago. I ended up scrapping the project and starting over. So what you saw there, the difference between what I did that time and what I did this time, all had to do with my comfort level on this bit. I've used this bit doing routing, pattern routing, plenty of times before, and every time I've used it, I've been able to go uphill by going very slowly and being very careful about it. But what you saw there is, as I was routing on the uphill, one, the uphill was, kind of, was pretty steep on these compared to what I've used it for before. 
but the piece actually moved away from the bit for just a split second and then when it made contact again it was enough to grab it and it cracked the whole end off of it so the reason i was you saw me flipping the, that this time was to prevent that from happening it's the same reason that i was so careful about making the pattern a mirror image from left to right so that, that way i could take it out and flip it over and this side and that side would be the same so what i was able to do is only work on the downhill and by only working on the downhill i completely avoided that makes a big difference it's really the safer way to do it and the better way to do it and it prevents your project from being ruined and having to scrap it and starting over again Well, that's going to wrap this one up. This is actually a second video for this project and I hope you enjoyed watching them as much as I enjoyed making them. This was a fun little project that used a very useful technique of pattern routing for making multiple identical parts. Pattern routing can be used in a wide variety of applications so hopefully you'll get a chance to try that out on one of your projects soon. This piece is actually an accessory for the Walnut Buffet cabinet that I built a while back and will be going in the center section of that cabinet. I did document that build in a series of videos that are out on my channel if you want to go check those out and I will be releasing more videos soon of other projects. I do have a couple lined up already that I think you'll enjoy. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.